Hello and welcome to Languagecraft for a brand new series. This is something that I've wanted to do for about a year and a half. I had the idea a long way, a long time ago, and I just never had the opportunity, never had the skill set to do it. And I've actually since then realized that uh, Shin from the Yogscast is doing the same kind of series. Anyway, I launched it on my French channel, and it was a great success. And I thought, well, even though it's a lot of work, I really want to do this in English as well, and really share it with uh, uh, more people. So here we are. This is going to be the first real construction series on the channel, um, which will go alongside all the time lapses that we do with the team, and it's going to be a step-by-step -step time lapse. So basically, I'm taking you with me, and you're going to be able to follow from A to Z the whole process and the whole construction of a medieval village. The music during the whole series will be what you're listening to, approaching Nirvana. And I decided, you know, I thought it had a good feel. It went well with the uh, theme and very relaxing. And so I hope you won't get too sick of it. Anyway, it's pretty, pretty low. Um, just focus on my voice, I guess. This is the first season, so we're going to start pretty small, I guess. And further on, we're going to get bigger and bigger. This season I'm going to do alone. In the next ones, my team will come and who knows, maybe we'll do our epic time lapses all together in less time lapse. Who knows? We'll see. The texture pack is John Smith Legacy, which is great for construction and I love it for nature as well. So perfect. And you'll see shaders during the whole show, except for this first episode simply because for technical reasons I was at 2 FPS and it was impossible for me to film uh, but for all the other episodes you'll be able to enjoy shaders as well. Now I had the opportunity to train with one of the best and to learn just how complicated uh, terraforming is. I learned with Aurélien Sama, Aurélien Sama um, whom I hope you know, he's uh, probably the most renowned terraformer in the world. And he, uh, he kind of coached me and he took me by the hand and said, okay, here's what you need to do step by step. And the first step is to turn everything into stone. It's very hard to terraform with a lot of different materials. And so what's easier is to just turn everything into one and after that, you'll be able to shape it the way you want and then turn it back into whatever you wanted. So that's what I'm doing here, turning everything into stone. And the second thing that bothers us is water. Water is, I wouldn't even know how to explain it, but it is considered uh, like a surface, but you can act through it with your, uh, your uh, terraforming tools. So I just thought, get rid of it, we'll put it back later as well. And now here is the core of what terraforming is, is shaping the landscape. So here I'm just making everything smoother. I chose this land because I liked the, the shape of it, but it's really, you can tell it's Minecraft uh, basic generation and I'm not a, a huge fan of it. So I thought, let's change things. Um, one thing that you can notice here, for example, is that my slopes going into water, this is the river, they're much smoother uh, than the Minecraft basic slopes, which I find are too abrupt. And this is, as I was saying, this is the core of terraforming. I'd say this terraforming took me about 10 hours, and this, the shaping the terrain, was about eight out of those 10. But as I said, I want to make the first season cool and then go up from there. So we're doing something fairly flat. We'll go for mountains later. Anyway, one tip that Aurélien gave me while he was coaching me was to think about topographic maps. You know, those maps that you use for elevation in real life. So I think we're pretty good now. I'm pretty, I am like the shape that we have, so I'm going to put back the water. It's a very important part of any kind of landscape. It kind of sells the effect. So we need that water back in, and we're starting by the sea, putting everything back in. Uh, it, it's actually very difficult to terraform without the water, in a sense, because you don't know where that line is. 
where exactly is the water edge? So now that you that now that I'm putting the water back in, we're really getting a sense of how the terrain works, where are the edges, where are the shapes. And now we're going to paint the terrain. First thing I like to do, uh, and there are many different uh, techniques, what I like to do is first put back that first layer, the sand. Uh, well, in my case it's sand, Aurelien prefers gravel, for example. I just like the difference in color between uh, the sand and then what we're going to put the, the grass. So this is pretty striking, and what I first decided pretty much was any block that touches the water edge is going to be turned into sand. And I think that looks pretty good. I changed it here and there because you don't want something too narrow. Second step is the bulk of the terrain, is to change all of this stone into dirt. And I think I did it, what, to three blocks uh, deep. And you're going to see that the in a second I'm going to come with a second step and it's going to look like it's exactly the same, but it's not, and I'll explain why. But it's really important to just have everything dirt, that's your basic material for the surface anyway. And as I was saying, the second step then is to put grass. And I'm not just doing an overlay like I did before. I'm using a magical command called green. And this command basically is pretty smart. It detects which blocks are not underwater and not under another block. And all those dirt blocks are changed into grass. Pretty convenient. And now I think we're pretty much at the end of our terraforming. It's time to make it natural again and put back all the plants. So we're putting a lot of flowers pretty much everywhere. We're spamming it. It'll, it'll, it won't be so present afterwards, but for a first pass it's important. And then we put trees. Um, not as many trees as you would normally put. Um, in theory, you know, forests are a lot more dense than that, but I thought for a first pass this was good, we can always put some more later. And so here is our finished terraforming. I think it turned out really great. I'm very happy with the results. And I think it's going to be a really good base for our future village. So if you have any comments, please make sure to leave them in the comment section. I'm really curious to see, you know, what the response is towards this. Uh, I've had the response from the French community. And now I'm curious, you know, this is a different community. I'm, I'm hoping you have different input. Anyway, we're just flying over things, just looking at it more closely. And we can see that, like, you can see there for the uh, riverbed, it's much shallower than it used to be. And all the different mountains that were on the seaside have just... I've, I destroyed, basically, uh, because I didn't really like them. I thought maybe cliffs for... Uh, cliffs on the seaside will be good for next season, not for this one. This one I want something flat, easy, and I'll make the I'll make the elevation with the building, shall we say? And here we go up the uh, river's mouth. Who knows? Maybe ships will do the same in the future. We can see just how green this has become. I don't know. I I feel like it's greener than it used to be when it wasn't the terraformed version, but just the old one. And here we go, coming up from what, you know, potentially might become the center of the village, in the center of the plain, circled by water, and where our growing community will be.
So here we are, here's the bird's eye view of the landscape. Pretty cool. I must admit, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the results. Uh, and I'd like to thank, you know, everyone who helped. And if you like this landscape, if you're interested, the download link is in the description. Please feel free to use it on your server or whatever for an adventure map, who knows. Uh, please do give credit though. Uh, but anyhow, just have fun with it, yeah. Now, in the original series, uh, here was the opportunity for people to write in and download this map and tell me exactly where they envisioned the different buildings. Unfortunately, since the series has already started, this won't be possible in the English version. However, Season 2 will probably be the other way around. So if this really interests you, keep in mind that in Season 2, you will be able to shape this village. But for the time being, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm happy to share this with you. I hope this is going to be a great adventure. And I'm eager to see your reaction to the following episodes. And how the village is going to evolve. On that note, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.